Hey everybody, um, so I have been wanting to do a giraffe, this giraffe here, and I thought today would be a great time to do it. So um, I have a couple of uh, days off here. I'm busy, busy, busy working, and I took an extra day so I could catch up on things, and so I thought it would be a great time to do a video. So we're going to do this giraffe. I took a, I'm still trying to figure out how I want to approach it. And so I'm going to work that out on video with you guys and kind of take you through my process of, of uh, maybe thinking about how I want it to be. And then it could possibly go quite different directions. And that oftentimes happens as I'm painting and probably will happen to you guys as well at some point. Um, I can plan all day long and then when I start to paint it just kind of has a mind of its own and takes on a whole different uh, direction. Anyway, so first of all I got this image off Pixabay. I've found that that's a great resource for getting photos that you can use free. Um, you know, there's no royalties, so you're not going to get in trouble using them and posting them on social media. So this one came from Pixabay, and it's this cute little giraffe. Isn't he cute? I love this little, the fuzzy, I just want to touch his nose. He's so cute. I don't think they bite, do they? Um, anyway, so I got the color copy, and I'm like, I love the blue uh, with the color of the giraffe because they are uh, complementary colors. Or I mean, it's kind of an orange, so orange and blue are across the color wheel from each other. And so I'm not sure what I want to do. I don't think I want to put in that strong of a background, so I'll probably just start with the giraffe and then suggest the sky later. But I always like to do a black and white because then I get a very good idea of where the values are, how strong they are in certain spots. So you can really, especially if you close one eye and if you squint with both eyes, you can really, um, that, that gives you a better idea of the contrast. And I think I've shown you this before, but I'm going to show you again because this is also another way to get the values. To take out the color and get the values, you can use a red cellophane and it just grays out everything. So you can really tell where the darkest values are gonna be and where it's lighter. The color kind of gets in the way sometimes of seeing value. Also, I wanna show you this little trick. It's kind of a cool thing. I, even as hard as I try to keep my pencil lines light, they still tend to be a little dark. So I've got a little um, eraser. This is one of those needle bullets darker than it used to be because it's got pencil on it, but you can form it into a cylinder. It's a little bit hard to do that. And then you can go over your drawing and this gives you a lighter pencil than you had before without erasing and leaving all the crumbs of the eraser. So, um, and also when you're brushing it off, it tends to smudge. So this is a great little tool for taking off some of that excess pencil. And you don't, you just have to be careful not to take off everything. Um, Cause it can be easy to just eliminate all of it. So, okay, I've got that done and you can, you can see my palette here. I've got, I like to show you guys um, my mixing area so you can see actually what I'm talking about when I'm telling you the colors I'm grabbing. So I think what I'll, I'll try maybe to do is stick with the oranges and browns and I love the little blue in the eye and just go go for it just go for it so i'm going to start with uh probably a number eight brush and i'm going to go with my utrecht round these are really nice soft brushes so it's big enough 
um, to fill in some of these areas, but it does come to a tip when it's wet. Just show you, grab a paper towel here. You can get a pretty good tip on it so I can come up into some of the smaller areas. So I'm just gonna mix up some different colors. I think what I really would like to use, this is a Primatech Bronzite. That's gonna be really fun because it actually has some sparkle in it. Um, let me see if I can show you that up close. So it really has a nice flow to it. I don't think you can see it. And it mostly shows up when it's dry anyway, but I think that's a good color to start with. That's gonna really add a nice look to it. So I'm gonna get that kind of ready to go, get it activated with some water. I always spritz my paints to get them ready to go before I start painting. And a lot of times I like to get my colors out on the palette so they're ready to go. I don't have to think about uh, grabbing it or mixing it because it's all pre-done on my palette. So I'm just gonna put out this and then I'm gonna lay out a little bit of, um, let's see, I've got in my well here is a core burnt orange. It's a little bit different than the Daniel Smith burnt orange, um, but I'm really loving it. Core colors really have a tendency to just swoosh on the paper, and I really think that's fun. They they actually do it on the palette too. If you if you mix them, they just flow out into the water really beautifully. So I'm really uh, really loving the core. This is very close. This is actually really close to the burnt orange, um, but it is actually Core's Quinactridone Deep Gold. So I really like that. I'm gonna intensify the colors on this guy. I think that's important to do. Rather than just copy, copy, copy the picture, we're gonna just um, intensify the colors. And I usually, start where I feel like starting. Some people like to start um, start at the center of interest and work out, and sometimes that's really cool. And some people choose different areas. It's just all a matter of feeling. And I think what I'm gonna do is start over here on, I'm gonna call it a her. She looked, it, this giraffe looks like a she. So let's go with that. I'm gonna just, um, start on dry paper and come right along. I just love, 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 like I said, it's the Primatech and it's the Bronzite and I'm kind of coming out past where my line is. These are very granulating colors and I'm just gonna actually, I'm gonna make sure that I'm switching brushes because I can tend to get a little bit lazy and stick with the same brushes when I really should be switching. And it's really important to use the appropriate size brush. So very fine number two round, and I'm just coming up and letting that flow into my um, Bronzite Genuine. I'm gonna drop a little bit more of that in so it kind of flows around. And then we'll move on from there. I do think I wanna just mix up a tiny bit of a darker value so I'm gonna go with my Quinactridone Deep Gold and add a little bit of, let's see, um, I think maybe the Royal Blue. It's kind of got a greenish tint. I'm not so sure I like that. So let me see how a little bit of the Burnt Orange gives me a little bit of darker. So I'm just gonna barely touch in. 
and where it gets in the shadow. There's just a little bit of shadow area of that mane. And then there's a teeny tiny fringe, which I'm going to use a quinactrodone, just straight quinactrodone, <laughs> quin gold, okay? I try to say it, I really do. And there's a little bit of raw sienna, kind of tone that down a smidge. And I'm going to right away, and I probably should go to my bigger brush, but I want to just soften this edge real quick. Um, so I don't have a hard edge in between the mane and the spot on this gal. Okay, I'm going to put down that brush and spread around that bronzite a little bit. And I'm going to grab a little bit of the darker value there that I had for the mane and just kind of let that flow around. I think it would be fun to do a little bit more of this Primatech line. And there's a little area in here that kind of looks cooler in color. And so I just put in some Amethyst Genuine, and that's also that Primatech. I'm going to grab a little bit of Burnt Sienna and touch that down in here. So there's puddly, pu kind of a puddle of water here, and I know if I get a little bit thicker paint and bring it into that, that it's um, not going to dilute as much. So if I brought in a diluted, more diluted mixture, it would spread out and it wouldn't darken what I'm trying to darken. So I wanted to make sure that I had a little thicker mixture coming into that area. And I'm liking the feel of that. That's pretty cool. And so we'll just keep keep moving on in this direction, in this uh, manner. I'll come right down here and kind of sort of follow those lines. It doesn't have to be exact. I don't mind the pencil lines later on. And we're just going to do the same thing, add a little darker value. Look at that spread around. So I'm constantly making sure that I check the moisture in my brush. I don't want to put too much moisture back in here. Um, I want to, and there I'm soaking up some of it because I feel like it's a little too puddly. I do want to come in with some of these darker values and make sure that they show up. So if I have too much moisture on there, they're going to just kind of dissipate and disappear. Disappear. So a little bit more of the Amethyst Genuine. And kind of like the line here that seems to be shadow. So I'm just going to work that out of my giraffe spot, come up in here, and we can strengthen these values after, but for the most part in the giraffe itself, I would like these spots to be one and done. I don't want to come back and, and start messing with them and ruin the feel. Like I really am loving the feel here. I am tempted to come up there. There's just a little bit of moisture on there that I could probably uh, use to my advantage. Paint's a little bit thicker, so it's not going to mess it up. Where did I put that? So I'm just going to get a little bit thicker mixture of the bronzite. Now I just soaked up a lot of moisture. I felt like this was a little too dark, so I'm going to spread it just a little bit around in here. I'm going to add a little bit of dark down here. And then probably best to leave that alone and let it dry. Now let's go a little bit golder with that one. And I'm going to move down to my number six. 
It's probably one of my favorite brushes for these smaller paintings. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of this Quin Gold. That is actually a core color also. I just remembered I put that in that well. So let's go and, ooh, that's pretty bright. Just play it up a little bit. A little negative painting in there as well. There are some um, wrinkles and crinkles. A little bit of that bronzite to drop in. As long as the paint is still wet, you've got a living area to work with. So you can drop paint in. Once it starts to dry and the sheen has gone from the paper, you've lost your opportunity to have the paint move and spread around um, in the way that it's doing as I'm dropping the color in here. So you wanna make sure that you keep that sheen and if it's gone, be aware of it and just uh, move on. You know, you can come back in after it's dry and make some changes, but I'm liking that as well. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna come down here. And I think I'll add a little raw sienna into that. Give it a little body that's a little bit more opaque. And I'm getting a pretty thick mix. This, this is a little bit hard to get a deeper, it's not a deep, uh, dark value anyway, but it's a little bit tricky to get enough, enough of it out on the palette, it seems. But it is beautiful. I do love that color. So I'm just getting a couple of those darker values in there so it can spread around a bit. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. And I'm already looking at this thinking later when it dries, I can still see that the, the paper is raised a little bit, the sheen is gone. I don't wanna do anything unt until that is completely dry. If I start trying to glaze over the top of it, it's gonna lift color and move color around, which I don't want going on. It, it wouldn't be a pretty sight. So I'm just gonna keep it tucked away and let's look at the black and white here go back to the black and white and look at the spots that we have going on here i'm going to kind of soften with some water and extend that out i don't know what's happening past the edge of the paper so i'm just going to soften by rinsing the brush of color and then pulling in pulling the color down into that wetter clear water or water that i put on there so it softens so you see how it softens And I can keep on doing that and it'll soften even more. I'm not too concerned about it, just having a different edge there. A little raw sienna and burnt orange together. I grabbed and I'm just gonna let that kind of float around. And I really am liking that amethyst that's going to give some really nice texture it also has sparkle in it so that's really fun i enjoy that and let's get a little darker um one thing that i want to uh point out too and i have a real tendency to do this which is splattered my paper um is to get, um, I don't know if lazy is the right word, but I tend to start grabbing um, paint when I should stop and maybe turn my palette around, get a clean area and mix some fresh paint up. So I don't want to get lazy and grab paints that aren't going to work for my next area, which are going to be some of the darker values. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and that's the Quinn Gold Deep. I want back to my burnt orange. I'm going to get a new petal over here and I'm going to add some carbazo violet and that's a Daniel Smith color. I think you also will hear it called um, dioxazine and then I'm going to grab a little bit of burnt sienna to that and I think a little bit of cobalt blue to cool that mixture down it's also going to gray it down so I'm going to keep adding to that so that right there looks about right I want to do the area that's in the shadow so I don't want it to be too super dark or uh, too warm of a color. So I'm just going to straight up come right to this edge. And switch brushes super quick. Go on to my ten, uh, two because I've got some finer lines up ahead. So let's get that nice and sharp. And I'm going to come along there and just pull that color down. Now it's coming into the light, so I'm going to just continue those lines, those crinkles, with a sh uh, another color. And then as I'm coming in here, I'm paying attention to my photo reference so I can see where the color changes are, where there's going to be a little patch of color on this gal. And I've got some more, a little bit darker in here. And then I just rinsed my brush and I'm dragging some of that color down along that crease. And then I'm going to strengthen the dark over here. It's a little bit more in the shadow. Okay, I'm going to go back to my number six and just get a little bit more of the cobalt blue into the edge of this mixture. And come right along here and add a bit of a shadow. Kind of stay away from some of those areas. And actually that shadow comes right along the edge right down to here. And this is thicker mixture here, so I'm hoping it's thick enough to kind of stay put, but give me a soft edge for under her neck. And then I can come in and strengthen that a little bit later in the valley department as well. And that looks to be a pretty good, it's her eyelashes right there. I like the shift in color and value there. And I can strengthen up some of those lines, you know, the creases in her neck a little bit later too. I'm just going to come on down with that shadow right under her chin. I don't want to go too far because um, over here because I want to make sure to keep it nice and soft. So I don't want to go so far that my I can't blend and soften my edges. So I'm just going to come along her mouth and soften there for right now. I'll, I'll let that dry and then come back and do some more work over there. Um, while I have the shadow color, however, I'm going to come up behind her ear. You know, it's really funny 
maybe not funny, but I get a real, um, real connection going to my paintings and I just am falling in love with this little giraffe. She's really sweet. I want to, I want to go pet her. So <laughs> it is funny. You do, you do that with your work. Um, as you go along, it's real easy to get tied emotionally to what you're doing. And then sometimes it's really hard to let go of those works you know when you have something you really love and somebody else loves it too and wants to purchase it it can be kind of emotional kind of hard to let things go love the way that looks around her eye and it's going to really be cool when the uh, rest of it's put in there um like i said i really love that little spot of blue in here that's a reflection of the sky so i'm going to be really careful to put that in there but so far i'm just really loving this really really loving her i'm going to drop to a smaller brush back to my number two long round i really love these brushes these princeton velvet touch they're really a great um really a great brush to use and I'm going to go into her ear here and start working on some of these darks. Those are the fun parts. And in a painting like this, you can start uh, working with them before you're, you know, at the end of your painting. So I'm just going to feather this out a little bit over into this other part. With this brush, I can kind of start working on the texture of the fur in her ear. And we've got a little edge here that's in the shadow. There's a lot of water on there, so that's gonna dry lighter, as watercolor always does. Just gonna come down along that and let those two fuse together and soften. And Grab a little bit of that bronzite and throw it in there. Just ever so beige. And then I'm going to slightly soften this up at the top and come right behind her ear. And more of the bronzite. It's working really well with the colors that I've chose. I really, uh, really like this so far, and I really want to work on that eye. I'm very tempted to get started with that. It's a very dark brown. So I think I'm going to bring in a new color, em Emitazone. Brown by Holbein, that's kind of red, I'm not sure. Yeah, I do like that. And add some of that. And then I think a little bit of this ultramarine turquoise to that. It's got a green to greenness to it, and the imidazone has a red. So this is a great, um, a great deep dark and I think I'm going to also add some of that blue which is my phthalo blue and that's going to give a very 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 dark so I've got a very dark mixture here and I am just going to start I want to pop in her eye it's just calling to me to do that right around that highlight there and voila we've got an eye and I will come down and I'm carefully coming close to that I might allow some of that to touch together so it kind of softens and you can't differentiate between where one begins and one ends. I 
and that's pretty thick on there. So I, I do pretty much want to leave it. I kind of think though, a little bit of that brown dropped in. I don't like how it bled into there, but it might be okay. All right, gonna let that be. And maybe as I say that, I might wanna just feather those little eyelashes, pull from the, the paint that's in the eye and just feather some of those out. That's good. All right, so let's move on and work on some of these other spots. And I still have my number six here that I'm gonna be working with. Going back to the same color, bronzite. Daniel Smith, Prima Tech, and get a little bit more out there. And actually those are more brown, so I'm gonna come over, let's see. I'm gonna clean up my palette. Okay, so I wanna mix up that dark again, a dark, as I did here, maybe a little bit lighter for the um, area that's more in the sun. So let's go with burnt umber. And do that. That's a good match, it seems. And let's add some, Oop, there's burnt sienna. Whoops, whoops, it's okay. Both of those colors gray down my blue. So I'm gonna get a little bit more of the burnt orange. Look at how that swishes and pushes. Swishes and pushes. When it comes into a puddle of paint like that, the core colors just kind of seem like they're weightier or something and they push the other colors out of the way. Okay, I like that. I might need a smaller brush though. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a number two, the Princeton Velvet Touch. This time it's not the long round, it's just the round. A little bit smaller areas, a little bit smaller or shorter bristles. So I feel like when you want a little bit more control, some of those longs can um be a little bit harder to control. So I'm just gonna kind of come into that area. It's dry now, so I can come into it with another color and strengthen what I put down before, what I put down previously, and kind of get these colors a little bit more similar. And I see that as I started painting this, I felt like where I was gonna make it kind of colorful, I changed direction, but it was not something I really planned. Um, I It just happened. So I, I wanna encourage you to, you know, kind of listen to your painting. And if you think it, you planned it one way and it starts taking a different direction, go with it. Just keep painting and, and see what happens. It really is kind of fun and exciting to see what um, develops. So let's go over to this guy is a little bit lighter. And I wanna kind of soften these edges out a little bit too before it gets too dry. And I just am doing that by adding a little moisture, rinsing off the color. I wanna lift some of that. And then I'm gonna pull that some of that color into that moisture that I put down on the paper and it's just gonna soften it a little bit. And come over here. 
forgot to put out some more bronzite. Let's do that real quick. Just kind of keep that as the, maybe the name we could say is a mother color. Some people call a color that you use consistently through your painting is the mother color. So bronzite can be my mother color. Love in the eye, actually. As it dries, I can see the paint settling and into a place that I really like. A little bit darker down here at the bottom. And I'm going to come right next to that and soften with the bronzite. Yeah, let's go with the cobalt blue too and the bronzite together. And there is a time that it's important to step back because you can tend to have, you know, tunnel vision when you're painting. I've got my face so into the painting, I'm so close to it that I can't really tell what's going on until I take a step back. So I'm loving the light in this and I am just super loving this eye. Come with some of this dark color here. And that's thicker so I could get it, get it in there. without it causing any blossoms. Beautiful. Okay, let's see. So now I'm gonna go back to my number six. And this time I think I wanna moisten um, right under her, this little part in there is gonna be lighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and under her little mouth and I want to get that soft look she almost looks like she's smiling so cute look at that okay now let's add a little bit more blue a little bit more ultramarine blue so that was ultramarine blue burnt umber and a little bit of um a little bit of burnt sienna. And that's a pretty mi thick mixture of paint there. I have learned, and I do pretty well most of the time, to, to get my paint thick enough and dark enough so I don't have to keep going back in layer after layer and trying to get the value right. It's more of the bronzite. And that's going to flow right into it. Rinse and get a lot of the moisture off my brush. Actually, I'm going to switch back to the number two long. And I'm going to come in with that thicker color and kind of start. I want to get some of the paint off my brush. But I do want to kind of get some of those whiskers pulled out. There's some whiskers. Probably ought to go with the smaller brush even. I've got a number one Utrecht. Make sure I don't have globs of paint on there because this is very fine detail work. But I want, I want to do that while it's still wet because then it is looks like all connected. It's connected and joined together. It's not like a disconnect. So some of them I want a little smaller. I don't know if that made any sense, but if it's, if I go in and put them in there, there later, there's likely to be hard lines. So I want to try to avoid that by pulling those whiskers from the wet paint. 
Okay, so I got most of the moisture off of that, most of the paint off of that, and I'm just going to soften this out. And I'll work with that later. I'll probably add some white whiskers in there at some point. And let's put a little bit more dark in here. As I was pulling from it, I feel like it got a little lighter than I wanted it to. Okay, there we go. Now that needs to dry. Okay, so this is all completely dry, this little section. I didn't want to stick my hand in it, so I thought it better let it dry. Um, and I have to mention, I don't know if I've said this before in previous videos, but a lot of times I, most of the time, unless I'm just really in a hurry and need to move on, is I'll let it dry on its own because the paint then has a chance to settle and separate and show some of this magnificent little sparkle and granulation that um, is happening with some of these colors. So I let that dry for the most part, but finished it up with a hair dryer. Didn't think it was going to make a difference, and I don't think it did. So good choice on my part. And I'm going to continue working with this bronzite. So I want to get a pretty good petal mixed up. And I also have some darks up here. Not super dark, but darker. So I want to get some more of the ultramarine blue burnt umber and burnt sienna mixture going. So I'm using ultramarine blue as the blue in this mixture because it is darker. So I could, actually I could mix up a little bit of both. Uh, I'll do a little bit of cobalt blue and the burnt umber as well. Cobalt's a little chalkier, so it'll give a little bit of a different quality to it. My paint's kind of are drying out. Let's give them a spritz. It's nothing more irritating when I'm in a painting session then my paints aren't wet enough. So there's the blue, ultramar ultramarine blue with the burnt umber. Giving me a very nice, oh, and I think I put, didn't I put a little bit of the, no, I'll just leave it as is. I might have dabbed into that other blue, but I'm just gonna keep it Keep it simple and keep going with just the ultramarine blue and burnt umber. A little bit more. I just feel I'm going to need more of that. I'm looking at a fairly small area, but I don't want to run out of paint in the middle of my wash. And this time I, I'm going to actually do it a little bit different on this section because I've got a bigger area. And I do want it to be soft, so I'm getting some clean-ish for the most part. I'm not dipping into my water that's got deeper color of water. I have one that's a little got, got a little bit more gray in it. I don't want gray coming up into my paper because I have some areas that Definitely, I want to keep lighter. So basically, actually, I think I'll come right down into his nose with all of that. Her nose, excuse me. Sorry. And... By the time I get down there, that's going to have had a chance to dry out. I think I want to add some uh, Quinn gold to that. Get it a little bit more golden in color. And it's already dry, dried out up here a little bit, but it's still softer. A little bit of that cobalt up here. 
A little bit of the ultramarine mixture too. A little bit more burnt umber. It's called mixing on the fly. Sometimes you think you have your color kind of right and it just needs a little extra oomph. So let's go like this. Get that shape working on our antler. And then I'm going to come back up into that a little bit and touch in some, some of that color. It's funny when you get to a place like I am right now with this gal that I really like where it's gone and I am a little bit nervous about losing some of the good things stuff that I'm seeing happening so it's a little tricky place let's get a little burnt sand I think yeah get that a little bit browner and I'm touching in a little bit of both of those it's just a, a bit thicker of a mixture so it's not going to spread quite quite as far I want it to just be soft um So let's come right up into her other antler here. Get a little bit more of the gold in there. There's some lighter areas in there, so I do want to pay attention to that. Soften in here a little bit. And there's not quite as much over here of the dark on her antler. So I'm just gonna touch in a smidge. And I'm more up on the ferrule of my brush because I'm needing a bit more control. So that's why I'm holding the brush a little differently in this part. So I'm gonna come right down in here with that color. That darker value. And right into that area. And I want to come right away over here before this is all dry. And I just am rinsing my brush of some color and softening some of those edges. A little bit more bronzite, kind of losing my 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 puddle of just bronzite. So I want to make sure to keep that coming. And right into there, and I'm gonna have a little line of the bronzite along her schnoz and come up in here. Starts getting a little tricky as you're adding paint and trying to stay aware of the areas that are drying and you don't want them to be hard edges. So a little bit more of the bronzite in the... This is gonna be coming down into that ultramarine. Coming up in there, I think. See, I'll kind of come right along here. That's where her eye is. So I want to be very aware of not covering that eye. I want that to be a standalone area. Just touching in some of these darker values so they spread a little bit. 
and let's get some of this cobalt blue mixture. Okay, back to the bronzite, the mother color. We're gonna just come in right over the top of her nostril. I'm gonna come over there too. And this I want just a tiny bit softer, so it's okay to come right up against that. And I'm just gonna touch in a little tiny touch of the cobalt blue mixture there. It's gonna give me a cooler shadow for that un, uh, part of her lip that is turned away. Let's get a little brown into that. A little burnt sienna, kind of right in here. Touch that in over here a little bit. And then I'm just going to soften some of those edges with a damp brush I got my color out of. Actually, I pulled a little too much out. Um, and then switch to back to my number two long round and just add some tiny strokes there to indicate her fur. And they're kind of coming into some of that upper lip area. And then I can grab a little bit of a little bit of that um, darker value, which is the ultramarine blue. I'm going to soften that out just a smidge. So I like to put in a darker stroke and then go back and soften it. Seems like it works really well for me. It really does work well for me actually, or I wouldn't be doing it. But it is a technique I've learned over time is to put in the darker value and then go back in and soften that. And let's see, there's a little bit here under her nose. And that kind of comes up. And grab a little bit more of the bronzite. And that'll soften that out and give it a little Cool, cooler temperature paint and a little bit here of that cobalt mixture and then again I'm softening it out this is still kind of damp so I'm having to be somewhat careful because I could cause some blossoms I don't want that to happen so A little bit thicker right in there of the paint that I put down and I could come back in here with a little bit of darker value as well while it's still wet or damp as we may say okay I'm liking her at this point and I can um probably be safe putting the nostril in because she the paint there is dry and what I'm coming in with is pretty thick so I've got a spot there I'll have to clean that up I'm just gonna put her little nostril in just pay close attention to the shape of what you're doing
So I am following that as close as I can. Let's get a little bit darker in here. And I'm gonna rinse my brush and get the water off of it for the most part and kind of pull some of that down for the shadow there, a little line. Okay, um, there's a little bit of a line up here. These are just futzy little details. Then I, I want to come in with her ear color there, which was, I believe I used the Carbazzo Violet and was it burnt orange? Burnt orange. As it swooshes together, it's going to be way more than I need, but I'd rather have more than less. And then this is where I want to put that blue in there. Actually, more purple. And my petal gets bigger and bigger as I fetz with the color. Okay, so I've got a little bit more burnt orange. I think that's good. Dab off some of that paint. And I'm going to come in. Dilute that just a little bit. And notice how I'm using the uh, side of the brush. You want to be able to utilize all parts of your brush. Don't just stick to using the tip or using the body. Learn how to use all parts of your brush. All the different strokes make the painting come alive. And then I'm just going to add that line and then I'll come along there with some of that bronzite and just soften that up a little bit. Even more, just pull it down into the inside of her ear and bring some of that around the corner here. That also is going to give me a little, um, a little bit of indication where the ear is. If I don't, if I decide not to paint that background, I'm not sure what I'm going to do quite yet. And I'm adding. I feel like that's a little too on the blue side, so I just added, or a little too on the purple side. So I'm just graying it down a little bit with. the color that I have on my palette there. And I'm lifting a little out because it got a bit too dark. And pulling some of that into the ear. It's given me a little bit of texture there for her fuzzy ear. Now I have been waiting to do this eye and I might might go with that smaller go with my number two shorter round what do we got here we've got the eyelashes I've got her eye so I want to pay close attention to where that eye is, and it feels like it came, like I didn't quite get the line all the way where it should have been. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that purple color while it's still wet, and I can still drop in some of the deeper okay I'm gonna leave that alone we're gonna let this dry and come back and do 
some finishing work. I think there's some detail work to do, and I don't know, I might, uh, I might think about adding some sort of a sky. So let's let this dry and we'll be right back. All right, so I had a chance to take a step back and look at this a little bit. And I feel like I need a little more uh, brighter coloring in this guy, uh, gal's head. So without further ado, I'm going to grab a couple of those colors that I started with and a soft brush. It's very important to use a soft brush when you're glazing over the top of another color because um, you don't want to lift the color that's underneath. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that burnt orange by Core, some of the gold, Quinn Gold, and just mix up a light diluted glaze of some of those brighter colors. And we're going to go right over the top and very softly brighten up what I put down before. So it's just going to help to give it a little bit more life. And I'm kind of dabbing off the paint as I feel I've got a little too much here and there. I'm going to get a little bit more of that burnt orange. It's kind of got a nice pink tone to it, so I like that. And I'm going to be, you know, skip over some parts. doesn't need to be solid, but I do just want to add that little touch maybe even just a little bit more I don't want to get carried away though because it's just very very subtle but I want it to be a little bit closer to what was going on over in this section so now a little bit wet and wet and just keep on spreading it around very, very lightly. Again, I have to emphasize that because it's so easy to dig in and then start lifting that color underneath, and that's not what I want to do. I think that'll do, and then I'm going to let that dry because I do want to come back in and do a little detail, and now with a little bit of splatter up there, I might have to add some splatter you never know we'll see how it how it pans out here okay let's let that dry and come back and do some of the finishing touches all right I think that's a uh, I think that's dry enough I'm I kind of got rearranged here and so I think what I want to do a little bit of just a tiny tiny bit. I hesitate to do this, but I feel like I want a little more area here of light in her eye. So I'm going to use this stiff bristle brush. It's a little bit big, but I think just using the corner, I can get a little bit more. And then when I go add my blue it'll be a little bit more obvious and then one thing that happens i walked away for a little bit and the paint dries on the palette so i want to be super careful not to add uh to spray it because that, that'll add too much water to it so i'm just kind of rejuvenating it i guess you could say a little bit um by adding some extra paint and little tiny bits of water, but not too much. So let's just kind of, too big of a brush. I recognize that automatically go to my very small number one so I can get in 
some of the finer details here in her eye lashes. Tiniest touches of dark there and coming into the, that helped a lot. So we'll extend that out a little bit. And that one looks pretty good. I like this one. Might just add a little, a little bit of extra coming out there. And really not a ton left to do. Maybe a couple more whiskers coming out from under here. Finesse it a little bit. And I did want to add some a little bit of darks up in her mane. Be careful not to drag my hand into anything that I just put down, so kind of be careful to stay away from that. There is not a whole lot that I can kind of play up a couple of areas. And there's a, some little eyelashes coming. These guys have really great eyelashes. We pay money. I don't pay money for them, but some people do. A couple of little sprigs there. How about some up here too? I'm gonna do a little bit of line work in here few little spots over there and all right so on the eye I think I want to do a manganese blue nova and just barely touch in a little bit of that and I'll probably want to come in with a white marker and kind of add some white back into that. Okay, you know, I really think I don't want to do too much more to this. Um, like I said, I need to determine whether or not I want to uh, add any sky back there, which I could do just real subtle. Clean up the palette and get all of that off of there. because Anything but blue is going to look goofy. I'm going to go ahead and... Just be very careful and get some cobalt blue and manganese, the two of those. I'm gonna put that aside. Grab a brand new paper towel. And what I wanna do here oops, is Come in with clear water because I definitely don't want this to have any hard lines whatsoever. So I just want to add, and there's kind of a nice tint already going there. So I'm just going to kind of go with that and just real softly drop in. I know what I do want to do, a little shadowing under there, but for the most part, I just want a very soft indicator that there's sky, because you know this giraffe has a very long neck, and so you're not going to really see 
much of the landscape. Let's flip it upside down. That's very helpful when you're trying to do this kind of work. Flip your board upside down. This is a really soft brush. This is the Neptune um, Princeton Oval Wash. I use this quite a bit. Again, I just want to stay very subtle. I don't want it to overpower my giraffe. Go with the line there, the direction of her mane. And then let's just let that flow. Okay, I am gonna leave it at that for this minute. And I'll probably come back as soon as this is dry and um, add a couple of little finer details with my um, marker. So hold tight and let's let this dry. Okay, so <clears throat> turned out a little blotchy, but I don't mind that so much because it is the sky. It could uh, easily be, you know, misty, or not misty, but wispy clouds. So this might, this marker is just a smidge big, but I might be able to get some fine lines with it. And what I do want to do is make sure that I just barely touch. So in here, I want to just add some little wisps. And in here, I'll add a couple of wisps. And careful again, I get this all over myself. Um, not really much more I want to risk, but maybe a couple little, I don't think it's gonna really show up so much, but maybe in there. These little markers are fun. They're a really good way to put in some of those little details that might have gotten missed. And there is a little bit of wispiness in here. So I'll put that there. And then we're gonna call it done. All right, all that's left to do is a little signature and choosing the color that I wanna sign off with is always different for the most part. I do different signatures. I think I wanna go with the theme of the painting though and stick to my browns. I'll get a little opaque quality to that by adding raw sienna. And then I'm just gonna sign my name. I've got the tiny brush and do I wanna do it that color? Okay, a little bit more burnt orange in there and then There you have it. We got our sales of giraffe. The only other thing that I was thinking to do, and again, using a very soft brush, so I'll go back to my number six. And 
and a little bit of cobalt blue, tiny bit of burnt sienna for a more grayed, more of a blue gray. And I'm just gonna come right along this bottom edge and dry my brush off of the excess and just come up over the top of that and soften that line a bit. I don't want it to be too hard of an edge, but I do want a bit of a shadow down there. Okay, that's good. We're done, and you guys, I hope you like this video, and go try, go find some images on Pixabay and just experiment with um, painting them. There's nothing to lose, everything to gain. You're going to just get better and better as you go. You grow as you go, remember, so practice makes progress. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you like this video and you want to see more. Really appreciate it, you guys. Thanks. Take care. Have a great day. Happy painting. Bye-bye.